Okay, so we're going to, uh, as always, give all praise and glory to the most high power, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, and we thank him for being able to rehearse the righteous acts and we into the Feast of Dedication, Feast of Lights. And I was asked to go over uh, Second Ezra, the 13th chapter. So I'm going to go into it. As always, we're going to start off with Colossians 3 and 17. Colossians 3 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all. Bahashama Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. Giving thanks to the Most High and the Father. Bahashama Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. So all that we say and do is going to be. In the name of the anointed Savior, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. So let's go into it. Let's look at uh, the topic going to be in 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter. In the Apocrypha, 14 books that the Protestants took out of the original King James Bible and many other Bibles before the King James Bible was there. These books were there. So, and we're going to be reading from the Cambridge University Press. Apocrypha. So 2nd Ezra is 13th chapter, verse 1. And it reads, And it came to pass, after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea, that it moved all the ways thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, and when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. So, I want to say initially, this is Yahushai or Mashiach coming with the holy angels to deliver Israel, bring salvation to Israel. So you look at the thousands of heaven, first and foremost, which he's coming back with the angels. Let's go to Revelations 9.16. Thousands of heaven. Revelations 9.16. How many thousands is, are he coming back? Is he coming back? Revelations 9.16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. You see, when you look at Revelations 19 and 11, Revelations 19 and 11, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, which is pure righteous power, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. This is a Mashiach Yahushai. And in righteousness, he does judge and make war. So, we understand that righteousness is just a prelude to really get into this. Deuteronomy 6, 25. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the most high our power as he has commanded us. So he gonna come to Mashiach Yahushai and judge in righteousness, he gonna judge and make war. Keep that in mind. By the law of the most high. Verse 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed him. The armies in heaven followed Mashiach Yahweh Shai. We know that there's 200 million angels from Revelation 9 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. That's 200 million angels. 
that's how many thousands coming with him, as we're reading about in Revelation the 13th chapter. So, Revelation 19 and 14 said, and the army, which is 200 million angels, which were in heaven, followed him upon white horses. They covered in pure righteousness too. Power, pure power, pure true righteous power. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Okay, so we'll stop there and looking more into it because you got to understand a lot of this is he's already he already had some understanding from second Ezra's 11th and 12th chapter 2 so look at uh second Ezra's 12 and 10 And he said unto me, this is the interpretation of the vision. The eagle whom thou saw come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. So, let you know that the Apocrypha go right with the regular Bible. Because Daniel's is in the regular Bible, right after Ezekiel. You see? The same eagle that's talking about in the 11th chapter of 2nd Ezra. Listen, verse 12. But it was not expounded unto him, therefore now I declare it unto thee. See? So, the eagle was revealed to Daniel, this kingdom. In Daniel 7, the 7th chapter. In verse 1. See, because he's not coming back to fight his friends, <laughs> but his enemies and those that hate him. It says, in the first year of Belshazzar, this is Daniel 7 and 1, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions on his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea and the four great beasts came up from the sea diverse one from another right so looking at this that's why i say this is not written for you just to read it and understand it if you wanted everybody to get this then you you should be able to read this bible and understand it immediately know exactly what it's saying but he don't want you to understand it that's why it's written as it is written, so that you won't understand. You, it has to be told to you what this is about. And you see, when you understand, these four kingdoms were Babylonians, the Persian Medes, the Romans, excuse me, the Greeks, and then the Romans. Those are the four kingdoms that came up. And we look at uh, going to Revelations. Well, look at the beast. Let me tell you about the beast first before we go to Revelation. Re uh, go to Daniel 7 and verse 17. Like I said, these chapters go together. That's why he just expounded. He said he, he showed Daniel so much, but he didn't show him as much as he showed Ezra. He gave Ezra a little bit more. But Daniel 7 and 17 says, These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. See? Four kings that shall rise out of the earth. Now we got to start with the Babylonian kingdom because this is where he's getting the dream when he's in Babylon. So four kings that shall arise out of the earth dealing with four kingdoms see now when we look at uh, Omashiach Yahushai when it says he came out of the world. in Revelations so like your, uh, we're going to go to Revelations but 2nd Ezra is 13 and three, and I beheld 
And lo, that man was strong with the thousands of heaven. No, verse uh, 2. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea, that it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. You see? So, when you understand, the waters represent this in Revelation 17 and 15. Symbolic for this, Revelation 17 and 15. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So, it's symbolic also concerning Amashikamshai coming from among all these people, because he got to gather us from all four corners of the earth. And we are among all these nations, the 12 tribes of Israel. So when you look at, uh, go back to Daniels, look at Daniels. Daniels, uh, the seventh chapter. Daniel's the seventh chapter. And verse 11. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. It says, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, who was a Mashiach of Shai. This is the destruction and the, the judgment that's coming on the earth against these nations that's going to be in power. And I beheld one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, the chairs of the Most High, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given to him dominion, this is Mashiach of Shai, and glory, and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages, should serve him. That's why he's coming from among all of them. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. That's what's promised to him, my Shekel Shah. And nobody can take that away from him. You see? So let's continue. We look at our uh, Psalms 104, Psalms 104 and 3, so you can see these angels that's coming with him, pertaining to who they are. Psalms 104 and 3. Who lay up the beams of his chambers in the waters, see, who lay up the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? It says, "Wait, that's water in the wind." All that we just read in Second Ezra thirteen, verse two. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea. That's water. That's the wind in the water, and it moved all the waves thereof. Psalm one hundred four and three. Who lay up the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariot? I mean, the clouds are vehicles, or the angels who make it, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, walketh upon this wind. 
bringing forth the judgment, who maketh his angel spirits his ministers of flaming fire. Also, when you look at all. Uh, Uh, Psalm 68 and 17. The chariots of the Most High are 20,000. 20,000. Even thousands of angels or spirits. The Most High is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. So, let me see. Acts 1 and 9. Acts 1 and 9. This is when Amashek Abishai died, rose, walked the earth, for, rose on the third day, walked the earth for 40 days. This is what happened. Acts 1 and 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while he looked, and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, he went up in his cloud, which is a chariot of the Most High, which are the angels of the Most High, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. These two angels stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same of Mashiach Yavashai, which is taken up from you in he into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. So he's coming like that. Revelation 1 and 7. Remember, he's coming. That's what we're reading about now. Initially. He's coming. Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Coming with clouds. We know that's the chariots of the most high, the vehicles of the most high, the angels driving them. And every eye shall see him. So you gotta worry about nobody saying he's over here, he's over there. He said, Every eye gonna see a Mashiach that was shot. And they also which pierced him, everyone that pierced him. From the time they put them nails in his, them stakes in his hands and his feet, to the time. That he come back as a thief to judge and make war, as we just read. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so. So, this is him. Another one, Isaiah 19 and 1. Isaiah 19 and 1. The burden of Egypt, behold, the most high while my shadow shine rideth upon the swift cloud. You just gonna be moving. Swift cloud. It shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. And the heart, the mind of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. So that's prophecy. We know that it's not talking about ancient Egypt, it's talking about this modern day Egypt. Oh yeah. It's talking about this Egypt in Revelation 11 and 8. Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. It's talking about America. Which spiritually is called Sodom, because all the, the abominable acts that they're doing with men and men and women with women, and spiritually called Egypt, you see? Where I, well also our power of Mashiach was crucified because where is it that 
is being promoted that he still sees a boy That white image that they put up of him right here in America. Only in America. For real, for real. So. So as we see, Isaiah 47 and 3. So you know, you don't have in your mind any kind of way except for what these scriptures are saying through these precepts. How he's coming. Isaiah 47 and 3. It says, Thy nakedness, meaning your shame, shall be uncovered. Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. You're going to be exposed. It's talking to the daughter of Babylon, the Edomites. So I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. He's not going to meet him as a man. That's why for us, well, it's important for us to come back to the Most High and follow his law, such commandments. We told us in Jeremiah. 4 and 22. Lamentation 4 22. So like this. That's about we foolish and solid children, <laughs> which we are. But the most I love us enough to be able to bring us back to his law, sense commandments, and have the faith that the Mashiach ever said that we have opportunity to seek salvation. This salvation that we're reading about, the Mashiach of Shaggy may bring. Lamentation 4.22. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished. This is what we're reading about in 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter. O daughter of Zion. Zion represents the 12 tribes of Israel. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. We're not going into captivity anymore. This is our last captivity we have to go through. He will visit thine iniquity. And visit the sins and the wickedness, O daughter of Edom. See? I will, he will discover thy sins. He said he's going to discover your sins. The things you have done that's contrary to the law, that's commandments of the Most High. And he's not going to meet you as a man, he said. Isaiah 47 and 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. All the wickedness that's being done. That's why he said he's going to discover your sins. That's your shame. Your nakedness is going to be uncovered, meaning he's going to discover all the sins that they have done. It says, I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. He's not coming as a man. He's coming as angelic power, superpower, at that. So let's go back to 2nd Ezra, the uh, I want to bring some up. Go to Second Ezra 11. Second Ezra is 11, and we're going to look at verse 37. And it says, Second Ezra is 11 and 37. It says, Now therefore I beseech thee that thou will show thy servant of this vision. He answered me then and said, Hear me, and I shall inform thee, and tell thee wherefore thou art afraid. For the highest will reveal many secret things unto thee. He hath seen that thy way is right, for that thou sorrow continually for thy people. As it was, you know, feeling bad for we the children of Israel. And make a great lamentation for Zion. This therefore is the meaning of the vision which thou lately saw. Thou saw a woman mourning, and thou be began to comfort her, began to comfort her. Saw a woman mourning as she began to comfort her. But now seest thou the likeness of the woman no more. But there appeared unto thee a city built. And whereas she told thee of the death of her son, this is the solution. This woman whom thou saw is Zion, we the twelve tribes of Israel. And whereas she said unto thee, even she whom thou seest as a city builder, whereas I saw, she said unto thee, 
that she had been 30 years barren. 30 years. She couldn't have any children. Those are the 30 years wherein there was no offering made in her. No offering made in Zion to the Most High. But after 30 years, Solomon built the city and offered offerings and then bear the barren a son. And whereas she told thee that she nourished him with labor, that was the dwelling in Jerusalem. But whereas she said unto thee that my son coming into his marriage chamber happened to have a fall and died, this was the destruction that came to Jerusalem who destroyed. And behold, thou sawest her, and behold, thou saw her likeness, and because she mourned for her son, thou began to comfort her. And of these things which have chance, these are to be open unto thee. So she was showing us, and you can read it the whole thing yourself, but just showing how we would mourn and even the land mourned for us not being there in Israel, being taken out of our land into captivity now 2nd Ezra 12 it's like I read one one, I read uh, 10 but 2nd Ezra 11 and 37, so I'm not kidding. But it's still going into what we got to deal with in seeing our destructions, breaking the Most High's laws. Now we're looking at 2nd Ezra 11 and 37. Book that. It says, And I beheld and lo, as it were a roaring lion chased out of the wood, and I saw that he sent out of a man's voice unto the eagle, yeah, and said, Hear thou, I will talk with thee, and the highest shall say unto thee, Art not thou it that remaineth of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world? So, remember I told you about the four beasts? What's who? The Babylonians, the Persian, the Mede Empire, then you had the Roman, the Greeks, then you had the Romans. So, this fourth beast, the Edomites come out of the Roman Empire. Right now we're in the Roman Greco, the greco roma area right now. It says, that's what it says in verse 39, Are not thou it that remaineth of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them? See? The end of the times that we in now might come through who? The Edomites. That's why I tell you in 2nd Ezra 6 and 9, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of that following. So it says, verse 40, And the fourth came, and overcame all the beasts that were past, and had power over the world with great fearfulness. That's the Romans. And over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. And so long time dwell he upon the earth with deceit, with lies, even unto this day. Verse 41, for the earth as thou not judged with truth. We have not judged the earth with the law, such commandments of the Most High, which is the truth. Psalm 119, 142. But thou hast afflicted the meek, that's what they have done. Afflicted the meek, who are the Israelites. Thou hast hurt the peaceable. Thou hast loved liars and destroyed the dwellings of them that brought forth fruit. And has cast down the walls of such as did thee no harm. I mean, look how they got America. All the different lands. Therefore, 
is thy wrongful dealings come up unto the highest. That's why we read in Lamentations 4.22. Most high going to discover their iniquity when we look at their sins. It says, Therefore is thy wrongful dealings come up unto the highest, and thy pride unto the mighty. The highest also have looked upon the proud times, and behold, they are ended. And his abominations are fulfilled. See? That's why I say you're going to look upon their sins. Why all this is happening? And get ready to go down in Ezra the 13th chapter. My second shot coming. And therefore appear no more, thou eagle. I mean, that's a clear indication of who was talking about. The eagle, who side is the bald eagle? He saw us. Nor thy horrible wings, nor thy wicked feathers, nor thy malicious heads, nor thy hurtful claws, nor all thy vain body, that all the earth may be refreshed and may return, being delivered from thy violence, and that she may hope for the judgment and mercy of him that made her. We know the most I made everything through a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. That's why by the time we get to 2nd Ezra's 13th chapter, he's coming. But well, you see what it says right here? In verse 46, it says that all the earth may be refreshed and may return, being delivered from thy violence, and that she may hope for the judgment and mercy of him that made her. So the most I'm not gonna just bring it all out so they'll know who it's talking about or what it's talking about. He bring it about in these last days. Right now you hear it. Cause they can't do nothing about it. It's, they just gonna fulfill what it is that they say. But he says, from thy violence. So look at what Abasha Shai said in the Roman Empire. What a Matthew. 11 and 12. Since he said violence, their violence is what he said. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven, which are the 12 tribes of Israel, suffered violence. Right? Suffered violence. And who? And the violent take it by force. See? So we were suffering violence under. The Romans, when he was on the earth. I mean, when he was born, Herod killed every baby that was two years old and under. Yeah. That's why he said what he's saying. So there's a reason why you see the judgment when it goes down for a reason for the judgment. Understand, overstand this point because is prevalent in the scriptures that's written a prophecy to happen because of what they have done. You look at uh, Daniel's the second chapter and He prophesied about it through Nebuchadnezzar. He had a dream. And Daniel interpreted it. Daniel's 2 and 31. Thou, O king, saw it, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. So the image is a man standing the head of gold, the breast of silver, and the, the thighs of iron and brass, and it had feet of iron and clay. So look at verse 41. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, which is the military, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed 
with Mary clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. You know, with all the different wicked things that's going on that's weak, that makes it weak. The military is strong. And in the days of these kings shall the most high power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. We just read about in Daniel 7, 13. The kingdom of Amashiach Yahushai, first and foremost. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Okay? So, this is Amashiach Yahushai kingdom. So let's continue. That should be enough on that. I mean, covered a lot just in these first three verses so looking at uh, 2nd Andrews 13 and 4 it says and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth all they burned that heard his voice like as the fire filleth when it filleth the fire so when you look at uh Say, everybody burned they heard his voice like the earth fell it when it filled the fire so look at his voice in Jeremiah the 23rd chapter and Mosai's voice is as fire. Is not my word like as a fire? Is not my word like as a fire, said the Most High, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? So, he coming with the word of the Most High. Straight up. And when you see here, it says, And whatsoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice. Like as the earth fell it when it filled the fire. So he's bringing the word of the Messiah. St. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And it was the truth, it's the law. So he's bringing it. And they're going to burn when they hear the word of the Most High. His laws, statute commandments, that's going to come forth out of a Mashiach Yahushua's mouth. Bear with me because I am so sorry to guide me in the look at uh, Judas. Go to the book of Judas, 16th chapter. Yeah. Judas, 16th chapter. And we're going to look at verse 13. It says, I will sing unto the Most High, O my Shekel a new song. O Most High, thou art great and glorious, wonderful in strength and invincible, that all creatures serve thee. But thou spake and they were made. Thou didst send forth thy spirit, and it created them. And there is none that can resist thy voice. Yeah. <laughs> There is none that can resist thy voice. 
Hallelujah. For the mountains shall be moved from their foundation with the waters. The rocks shall melt as wax at thy presence. Yet thou art merciful to them that fear thee. Keep his commandments. Oh yes. Michael 1 and 4. Michael 1 and 4. Michael, the first chapter, the fourth verse. And the mountains shall be molten under him, and the valleys shall be cleft as wax before the fire, and as the waters that are poured down a steep place. So we do it this fire. And that's how everything's going to be. Second Peter, the third chapter. So you understand. This is the word of the Most High is like fire and fire that burns. He's talking about both. Second Peter, third chapter. Three and. But the day of the Most High Wild Mashiach Yahushai will come. That's future prophecy. As a thief in the night. You don't know when a thief is coming. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up be burned up people seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved as we're going to read about what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and righteousness going back to 2nd Ezra 13 we'll have a holy conversation holy conversation Talking about this word, learning of this word, learning of the Most High. Second Exodus 13 and 5. And after this, people will be getting burned up. And after this, I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men, out of number, from the four winds of the heaven, the four corners of the earth. All these men gonna be gathered together from the four winds of the earth, four corners of the earth, to subdue the man that came out of the sea, to subdue a Mashiach Yahweh shot. So that's the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force, and what else? This the Navy, Army, the Navy, the Marines, and the Air Force, all together. To subdue a Mashiach Yahweh Shai. It's not no, I mean, they only want to have the equipment, the ordinance to be able to fight a Mashiach. That's why they got Star Wars, that's why they got Independence Day, deep cover all these movies that they make. Show them what? There will be some type of invasion coming to this world. They call them aliens. And they always have Jacob and Esau. Like the Edomite and Will Smith, always there to fight the entity that's coming to the earth to set righteousness up on this earth. It says, this is what they're going to be doing. But I beheld, verse 6, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain. And flew up upon it. See? Remember I told you he came out of the sea. He came out of these nations. All the nations. Because we scattered among all nations. And he gave himself a great mountain. And flew up upon it. But I, I would have seen the region or the place. Where out the hill was graven. And I could not. He couldn't see it. Why? 
because this is not a mountain. That's why he said he could have seen the grave. He could have seen a mountain. The mountain stands tall. But he couldn't because it wasn't an actual mountain. Go to Isaiah 13. And we're going to book it at verse 3. Isaiah 13 and 3 to show you what this mountain represents. That's why I say by the time you get to understanding prophecies and and different scriptures of the Bible. You got to know what it's talking about through the precepts. Isaiah 13, we're going to look at verse 3. It says, I have commanded my sanctified ones. Another identity of the one third of the twelve tribes of Israel, the sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for my anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, see? Like as of a great people in the mountains. You could consider these mountains, they, what, is, what is the definition of these mountains? Like as of a great people. A tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The power of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. Getting them prepared for the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, from the end of the earth. Even the Most High, or Mashiach Abishai, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. How ye, for the day of the Most High, or Mashiach Abishai, is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. He coming to no peace. So don't think that I come to send peace. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, every man's mind shall melt, and they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them, they shall be in pain as a woman that travails, they're going to be in pain like a woman that's having a baby with their contractions fall apart, and they come closer and closer and closer together, they shall be amazed one at another, their faces shall be as flames for that heat that he's going to bring on them. <laughs> Behold, the day of the Mosawa Mashagoshai cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. So you sin against the Most High with a sin, the transgression of the Most High's law. All you sinners gonna die. So when you say you ain't under the Most High's law, you don't believe in him, that's what you're saying. I ain't gotta follow him. He gonna kill you. As he just said. Another means of understanding these mountains is um, Jeremiah 51 and 25. More destruction. Let's read about it. The Most High have opened his armory, his ordinance, and have brought forth the weapons of his indignation. For this is the work of the Most High, the power of hosts, power of armies. In the land of the Chaldeans, that's where we at, Egypt. We in the land of Egypt, spiritually called Egypt, and the, and the daughter of the Chaldeans, the daughter of Babylon, the Edomites. She come against her from the utmost border, open her storehouses, cast her up as heats, and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. Slay all her bullocks, let them go down to the slaughter. Woe unto them destruction under them, but their day is come, the time of their visitation, that's what we're reading about, the day of their visitation, the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon, America, to declare in Zion the vengeance of the most high our power, the vengeance of his temple, and we know the temple of the most high, uh, who? call together the archers against Babylon, that's those missiles. Everybody got nuclear missiles, right? All ye that bend the bow, that have missiles, camp against it round about. Let none thereof escape. Recompense her according to her work. Let me say you're going to visit the sins of Edom. Recompense her according to her work. What she have done, say pay her back for what she have done. Reward her for what she's done. Do unto her for she have been proud against the Most High. 
against the Holy One of Israel. Therefore shall her young men fall in the streets, and all her men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Most High. This ain't something. This is prophecy. Saith the Most High. Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, most high-minded, most conceited, said the most high power of hosts. For thy day is come, the time that I will visit thee, and the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up. Ain't nobody gonna be with them. And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all round about him. See? This is the judgment, this is the prophecy of the Most High. And he's going to use the Mashiach Yavashai that's coming to judge and make war. Thus said the Most High, power of hosts, power of armies, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. Here we are, especially over in this north, this western hemisphere, oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. See? They held us fast until this day. They refused to let us go. This was also what they said. Zechariah 11 and 5. They understand there's a reason why it's going down like it's going down. Zechariah 11 and 5. Whose possessors slay them, meaning they kill for tribes of Israel and hold themselves not guilty. It was the verdict. Every time we get killed, it's not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Most High. Blessed be God. Blessed be the Lord. For I am rich. Because they sold us in slavery. And their own shepherds pity them not. You poor choppy preachers out there, you're not dealing with the truth. That's why you got something for you too. You don't come back and start teaching the truth of this Bible. As it is written. And not as you have been programmed to bring forth your lies. Like y'all getting ready for Christmas. It has nothing to do with a Mashiach Yahweh birth. And what are you getting for him, getting him for Christmas? <laughs> Sick. Sick, sick, sick. But this is our people. So you see, that mountain...